Well, the last episode was a little long in the tooth. And sunshine like crazy here. Um, so I thought I'd split that up into two episodes and this is what's left over from that last episode. So, hope you enjoy. And that means it's time to sand inside the centerboard box and that brings up another problem that you've probably seen already in a previous episode. Uh, I can't reach very far down in here. I can get almost halfway and it's, it's a problem. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm a little concerned that I won't be able to get to the absolute center. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm using this Dremel oscillating tool and I've got uh, a cutting bit on here. A scraper would work the same uh, because I'm not using the front edge of it. I'm using the side and this front corner here. And when it rattles back and forth against the surface, it chips away any loose flakes of paint that are there. And using the flat edge of it, it acts like a, a kind of scraper sander. So this is getting all of the flat things off of there, uh, all, sorry, all the loose flakes off of it. And that's really mostly what I'm concerned with. Um, after I do this, I'll go through as best I can with uh, some kind of sander. Probably I'll use the, the disc on one of the angle grinders to get down in there and, and sand down the inside as much as I can, but I know for sure that I cannot reach all the way with the angle grinder. This one, I can hold the end of it and I don't need a lot of force, so it gives me an extra 12 inches or so, 10 to 12 inches. Um, which I think is just enough to get to the, the absolute middle. So I already did the other side where the center board is now and it looks really nice. So this is gonna work out great. It's comparable to using a needle gun. Um, and I get away with that down in here because the dust doesn't come up out of here and it settles down. The boat is so low to the ground below that the dust settles on the ground immediately. So I've just laid out some fabric underneath the boat and it catches all of the particles and the dust that comes out underneath the boat. And on top of that, it's a very rainy day today, so really the dust won't go far at all, if any. So this is a great solution for today and uh, I'm just gonna get it done.
Well, I'm just getting ready to paint. I'm going to paint inside the centerboard box down here, and I'm going to paint this face of the centerboard itself. Um, this side looks good enough that I don't need to do any fairing. It'll just be fared on, on the back side here, which I'll paint at a later time. Um, but first, I need to get any lint off of my rollers. I've just got some duct tape here. Now, these are foam rollers, so there really shouldn't be any fuzzes or whatever, but you know, it, it doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. I can get my duct tape to play along here. Okay, there's one. When you're working with epoxy and you're going to be doing multiple coats, it's important to have several rollers ready because the epoxy might cure on your roller and you'll need a new roller but then the roller itself might get stuck to the frame and you might need a new frame as well so I have covered my bases I've got four more roller covers there just in case and I've actually got uh, eight more frames, I think, but uh, I shouldn't need even these two. I should only need one if I'm doing my job well. Okay, so the process is I'm going to put on one coat of West Systems 105 epoxy. Uh, with no additives in it, just the 105 resin and the 205 hardener. I'll roll that on, I'll paint it in where I can't get the roller in, and then I'm going to use this welder's brush, it's clean, brand new, to uh, wire brush it into the metal. That's recommended by West Systems to do that, to give it an extra good mechanical bond. And then I will use this plastic scraper to squeegee the resin into the metal to fill in any bubbles or voids or whatever that may have come up in the rolling process. And once that's done, I can go through and mix up another batch and add in the West Systems 422 additive. It's basically an aluminum powder. It's got some other things in there as well, I think. Um, and that's their moisture barrier additive. So I'll do uh, five coats with the moisture barrier additive and then measure the thickness with this thickness gauge. And I'm looking to get 20 mil of coverage. So, yeah. And if I can do all the coats in one go, then I don't have to sand in between. But if it cures to tack free, then I have to let it cure for eight hours and sand and start again. So I'm going to try and do the centerboard box first, and then I'll come back and do the centerboard itself next. I think that should uh, keep me going here. think about how I'm going to apply this. Probably going to get epoxy in my armpits when I reach down in here, but that can't be avoided. And I'm going to have to brush the end pieces.
It's uh, 9.30 p.m. and we have some unscheduled rain going on. And here where I have my work light is actually a hole through the deck. So I need to get a tarp over top of this so no water gets onto my uncured epoxy. I did get five coats done. So we almost got there. But uh, yeah, it's time for the tarp before any water gets on. very shiny paint. So there's some runs in it. Maybe up here on the top you get a better sense of what it is. Yeah. So this is five coats of it and it hasn't quite covered everything. Like there you can see the the blue white paint underneath from the old paint and I think that's because I wasn't putting it on thick enough on my coats I was trying to spread it too thin but on the ends where I had to put it on with the brush the brush puts it on very thick it's really hard to spread it with the brush so the ends are definitely coated well enough and the unfortunate downside of that is you get a lot of runs because it goes on so thick that it just sags. So yeah, really, really tough to brush this stuff on, but that's all right. So for today, I'm going to sand this down and then I'm going to put on two or three more coats until I'm happy with the coverage. And I won't have to do any of the brush work at the ends, so that'll speed things up. All right, I got all the sanding done and I've been painting away and Clever Octopus has a fantastic new color inside the centerboard box here. I wish I had better lighting in here. You can see down below, there's the gray down there. And there's the red. I'm going to put one more. Well, this week I've been slave to the paint, but, uh, and it, it's fought me for it too, <laughs> but I shouldn't have to do this much work ever again in the life of the boat. I'll have to fix up some scratches and dings when they happen, um, but as long as I take care of the anti-foul coating, then I shouldn't have to do any major rust repair like this. You know, maybe just sand out a, a small little section and, uh, and repair that. But 
yeah, this, this hasn't been a very fun job. Uh, yeah, it's taken me two complete days just painting the centerboard box here. So it's about uh, six feet deep and maybe 10 feet long. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a lot of area to work on, but I did not expect the painting to take this long. Uh, I didn't get to the actual centerboard itself. I still have tonight after dinner to, to work on that, so I might do that or I might just take it easy. And tomorrow I head back home. So I hope you guys liked what you saw. Oh, let me, let me poke the camera down in here and give you a better look at the finished product. Yeah, it's looking very nice. Maybe with the sun coming in this way. It's hard to see. It's not very good lighting in here, but uh, that's the idea of it. So that's eight coats. One clear, five of the gray, and two of the red. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed another episode, and I will see you back here next time for who knows what.